see. This is making me really upset. Um, this is the second time. This is like the third time that that I record something and then it deletes it. Well, <clears throat> I just think that it may not just have meant to be. Um, I am going to talk about Salt Lake City season four, episode ten. Um, it starts off with Heather and her book meeting. And I, what I wanted to say before is that the thing that makes this show so special is that um, the thing that makes this show so special is um, the fact that it does deal with religion and conservative religion. And I do think that that's important because conservative religion is unique. And even though we do not see each other, you know, I'm not a Mormon, but I do think that what they were trying to do is kind of bridge Mary and her conservative Christian and how we are not that different. Um, and I was raised conservative Christian and it left such an imprint in my life. And that my children, um, number one, I refuse to kind of go into that same space again. And even when I've had communication with people to um, recently, and me and them, I was like, look, we just not going. I was like, I used to believe and follow the same way, and I just don't anymore. And I'm not willing to raise my children that way either. Um, so I appreciate, I, I get Heather where Heather is. And... Angie is brushing her dog's hair, and I think it's horrible that you dyed your dog's hair this way. It looks cute to you. Wonder how the dog feels. Um, anyway, my dog would have hated it. Would have hated it. Um, Whitney and Lisa um, are talking at their at Whitney's house, and Lisa gets a call from Heather to ask to perform at the book launch, which is interesting. Whitney does not attend the book launch. Um, Whitney was upset at how Lisa was acting at her event. And Lisa was like, in the confessional, well, that's, you know, pretty much saying she was a hypocrite because she was disruptive at Lisa's event a while ago, like a couple seasons ago. Um, she was trying to explain to, to Whitney that she has a problem because Angie is telling Lisa how much she doesn't want to be around Monica, she doesn't like Monica, and then she's trying to run off hanging out with Monica like she doesn't get it. And Whitney is like, look, I'm going to need you to take, bring your voice down. She's like, I'm not hollering. You're not hollering, but you're talking very loudly and the kids can hear you cursing and she doesn't like it. And I also got Lisa when Lisa was like, okay, got it, got it, got it. Like, you don't have to run this in the ground. Um, Lisa, Heather and Mary, Mary, you have the most oddly decorated house in the world. Um, she read the books. She said she read the book. She only read the portion that she was in. And she was like, it wasn't true. And Heather's like, look, there's a lot of people who keep who keep pressing me about what is and isn't true about my book. And Heather read the portion that she said about Mary. And ma'am, Mary, what's the problem? I don't know what the problem is. Um, and Heather's like, look, there were harsh words that were exchanged. And Mary's like, what was harsh? You told me that I look like an inbred. 
Do you think I look like an inbred? Mary. Yes. Well, is that offensive? Yeah. Oh, well, then I'll apologize. Mary's a piece of work. But then she's like, even with all that, I'm still proud of you. Okay. So Meredith is trying to do a podcast and she's talking about 15 years later, she did a post nup and it wasn't about money, but it was about moving from Chicago to Utah and they were in a bad place and she thought that he would leave her and she wanted to sure up what would happen with the kids. It wasn't about money, it was about the kids and custody arrangements. And it's amazing to me how he just sat there and he didn't realize how bad things were. And it makes me think about like my husband, when we reflect on certain things, like he got upset with me because I was telling a, a colleague who's a, who actually just had a baby, but he was about a month before the baby came. And I was like, well, my husband today is a much better man, a much better father than he was before. And I think that you have to, in mothers, we have to give spaces to husbands our fathers for them to come into their fatherhood and when I was I thought that what I said was a good thing I was telling my husband about that and he was like I don't know what you're talking about like he literally <laughs> forgot so much of what was happening and I like it <laughs> It was really frustrating. And so I was like, okay. And there's been a couple of times where I've said some things and he's just like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? So it was nice to see that Steph is also the same kind of, you know, like, what are you talking about? He says that he was busy working. He wasn't there emotionally and he apologized. And it was such a touching moment. Unfortunately, it, none of it was recorded. I laughed. At least they laughed. Monica, babe, I know you're stressed, but why is your baby? Why is your toddler walking around with a pacifier? She's not saying gaga goo goo. Pacifiers are supposed to soothe and soothe the baby back to sleep. <laughs> this is now codependency. And if you don't nip this in the bud, she's going to eventually be sucking her thumb, which is, I mean, I guess. Um, my daughter sucks her bottom lip and it is the most frustrating thing. Uh, mom comes back and is like, I'm here with a gift. She's like, it's not a gift. It's not a gift if I'm paying for it. It's like, well, a peace offering. She's like, look, you keep doing this cycle of taking the car and... He's like, well, I'm trying to get your attention. She's like, so I I don't know where this goes, but the fact that she tells her mother to walk home, well, um, <laughs> I would never do this. Um, he's like, well, can my can someone you know your daughter drive me home? I don't know her. I forgot her name. No, you'll be fine. It's like, wow. I laughed, but I would never do this. So Lisa is ignoring Angie at the book event. So Angie's like, clearly there's a problem. Monica tells Meredith exactly what Lisa said about her mom not loving her, which I thought was very mean. And Meredith's like, you need to work on not reacting, but just responding. Monica's like, you know, that sounds healthy, so I'm probably not going to do it, which I thought was really funny. So while Lisa was saying, Monica was like, no, <laughs> rude, but funny. And so Lisa's like, whose side is Angie on? She's up here laughing at me and stuff. I thought Heather did an excellent job at saving Lisa with this amen choir, choir, uh, choir, I mean, the choir coming in and saying amen. And they did a beat, Lisa Raps, which was an A for her willingness to embarrass.
embarrass herself and being a good friend for it. Heather talks about the book. Heather and Lisa actually are discussing things. And this is where I also feel that it would have been nice if Lisa actually read the book. Because if you read the book, then you'd probably understand a little bit more about Heather. But unfortunately, I don't think that Lisa has that ability to read the book and discern anything. So Lisa is the kind of person where she adjusts religion for herself. Heather is one of those, I jump 10, I jump head first. I'm going to be really into this faith and I am 100% in. And Lisa's like, yeah, I take what I think is good for me. I drop what's down. And so Heather doesn't understand how Lisa's going about her faith. So I get it. And it's nice that they're able to kind of see each other. And Heather, you're just going to have to let this go. You got you to gotta take Lisa for who she is. Um, Heather's going to write a second book, which I think is really nice. Um, Meredith and Angie come to an understanding. Angie is a people pleaser. And I think that Angie knows for a fact that everybody in your mama thinks your husband's gay. Meredith is not the starter of this rumor, and she's not going to be the end of the rumor. He's a hairdresser in Salt Lake City. He's a hairdresser, not a barber. They think he's gay. Anyway, um, Heather's doing the second book. The, she talks with her kids about that. They're embracing it. And then Lisa and Angie meet at Lisa's house. And Lisa's like, look, I didn't realize that Monica has all these issues with me. Lisa feels that Angie is being not genuine and honest. Angie feels afraid to tell Lisa how she feels and what's happening with her relationships because Lisa's triggered and she starts screaming and you know being Lisa because she's the center of attention and um and Angie's a people pleaser Lisa's like that's not my fault you should kind of deal with my outbursts but you shouldn't be afraid and so now they're She's like, I just want clarity and consistency. I agree with Lisa, though, in the fact that if, you know, I'm getting into all of these arguments with Monica, Monica is being bratty with me and stuff, and I'm being mean back because of how you feel. And she's like, this is not fair that I'm catching blows and you cool with her, like, and now it appears that Lisa and Monica are going to have beef with Oval, right? Anyway, I hope this works because I have like, what, three or four other videos to do. Bye.